About five years ago, I read um, The Disappearance of the Universe, and it ch changed my life. It's probably it sounds like a cliche, you probably hear that so many times, but... I did. never get tired of hearing that. <laughs> and um, the way it changed my life is that it, I knew that The Course of Miracles was the only thing that I ever needed for the rest of my life. And so I, I, I read the text, and um, for the past five years, I have not been doing A Course in Miracles. Um, I, it's always on my altar, I always have it nearby, and sometimes I, I do actually read it. Um, but I want to ask um, about inertia, about how to break through the inertia of like, everything I hear you guys say I agree with and I resonate with, and I, I'm not finding a shred of doubt or disbelief or I don't think that's true. It's all true. I, I, I resonate with all of it. That I don't run home and start doing the workbook lessons. Um, so how to break through the inertia of having all this knowledge and believing in it, but not actually activating it in my life. And then the second part of the question is, um, I wanted to ask um, about addiction and about how the Course, I don't even think the word really appears in the Course of Miracles, you don't really talk about addiction, but addiction, um, and um, in terms of how to move through addiction. For both of you, both of you. Um, I'd say first of all with uh, the inertia, I mean I hear so many stories and witnesses of people like yourself that, that actually sometimes were in inertia and then the disappearance of the universe actually helped get them out of the inertia. You know, they'll say, well, I, it kind of was stagnating, and then that was like a, like a jumper cable, just got them going again. But um, also I hear, when I go around the world, a lot of people say things like, um, you know, they use the course as a, as a doorstop, as a plant stand. I mean, <laughs> you would not believe all the things that this book is getting used for. Or there's kind of funny stories where it's like, at first they like hear about it through someone else or they, through another book or whatever and they get like two, three, four and then they finally get the book but they just get it into their house. Then it has to go through a whole journey, you know, through the basement and, and you know, it's packed away for three or four years and it's quite amazing, you know, to hear all these stories. And what it kind of confirms to me is like, in one sense, it's kind of like a sense of readiness. Like, like when the Course finds you or you find, find the Course, it's, it's one of those things that's like, uh, it's like getting your whiskey straight up, uh, not on the rocks, or not mixed in with something else. It's like really straight. And because it's so straight up, that, that what you're describing is actually a pretty common experience. It can also be that, that um, sometimes people work with it and they, they just are hard on themselves. Um, when they're doing the lessons, they get really hard on themselves or with the text and they use that as almost like a self-sabotage, you know, to really just go, if I'm going to mess it up uh, this bad or if I'm going to feel this rotten, I'm, I'm not going to do it. But they may not even consciously say that, but they just kind of stay away from it. So, um, I think you really have to be ready. I guess, you know, one thing for Gary and I, we were so ready that we just like dove in and and I even had a group of students back in the 1990s and one time one of them said, David, do you ever like just think that the whole thing's like the biggest hoax on the planet and everything and, and have you ever just once had a thought go through your mind? What if, what if this is the biggest hoax there is? And I just look them straight in the eye and I go, no. <laughs> because it's true, I've, I've never in, in all these years had one thought like that. And I think for some people, I guess they must have some of those thoughts go through. I, I can't even imagine uh, how a thought like that would, would be, because I just have never had it. It was such a, a convincing experience when it came, and such a deep sense of, like, this is your life's path, this is your journey, run it all the way through. And, of course, it was like the only thing that I could focus on. I went from reading lots of books to just reading one book, not even newspapers and magazine. I mean, it was that, uh, really, just captivating for me in my life. 
So, and then the second part to your question about addiction, I did ask Jesus one time, I said, can you talk to me about addictions? And he said, well, there's really just one addiction, and it's judgment. And that all these things that seem to be physical addictions, you know, alcohol or smoking or overeating, sex and all these different things that the 12-step groups meet on, and that's more just a, a, an outplaying of, of symptoms that has many variations, and even if you do whatever, quit drinking, quit smoking, whatever the groups aimed at, the support groups aimed at, uh, even in 12 steps they say that you've got you've to get in touch with the stinking thinking, they call it. And the stinking thinking is judgment. And that's really what the Course is aimed at, is really getting at the basic teaching of judge not, lest you be judged. And so, it was a really straight answer from Jesus, and I said, oh, thank you, that kind of simplifies a very complicated field in the world. Yeah, it really is about uh, judgment. I see an unfortunate trend in 12-step programs. People are becoming very judgmental. It's like using guilt to talk somebody else into not doing this or not doing that. And it's like their way is the only way, it's their way or the highway. Well, it's not the only way. Uh, and I get emails from people all the time that are extremely harsh, extremely judgmental, and I feel like saying, why not for God's sake? You know, and you look back at the Blue Book, you know, Friends of Bill, stuff like that, uh, there's a lot of tremendous and wonderful philosophy in there. And these people are doing the same thing with 12-step uh, programs that people do with uh, you know, all these other philosophies, like Science of Mind and, and Mary Baker Reddy and all that. They devolve it. They don't live up to the original standards. They don't live up to the original ideas. So now it's like, oh, you either behave like me, or you know, there's something terribly wrong with you. That's judgment. That's exactly what David was talking about. The real addiction is the judgment, but they can't see it. You know, and so they go on and on and on, telling all these stories about how terrible you are, when the truth is, hey, it's not about somebody else. There's not really anybody else out there. You know, so that whole story that they have is made up. You know, it's all fabricated. And the real addiction is the judgment, and that's what we have to let go of. We have to let go of the judgment. That's why uh, you know, you'll see in the original 12-step ideas, ideas like live and let live. You know, what happened to that? Where did, where did that go? How did that get lost completely? And how about live and let live? How about let the other person live their life? It's none of your business. Your responsibility is your life, not theirs. You know, so I think that people need to take a step back and remember what the Course says. The Course says that judgment is the cause of all of the sorrows of the world. Every single sorrow that you'll find in this world is caused by judgment. That's what we need to let go of. That's what we need to get over. And if we can let that go, the rest will take care of itself.